Yes. Hey, this is Bo. And this is Aaron. And we are Mash the Controller. You're listening to Third Eye Radio Network. Listen outside the box. Welcome to the Alter View. Interviews with some of the leading alternative perspectives in media. No topic is off limits with these in-depth conversations with authors, researchers, scientists, and more. And now, The Alter View with your host, Dara. On the Third Eye Radio Network. Alrighty, everybody, good day and welcome to the very first episode of The Alter View, where we go in-depth with alternative media personalities out there on the web, YouTube, blogging, wherever it, it may be. And today, I am very happy to bring on the show Mr. Mark Sargent. How are you doing, Mark? I am doing well. Thank you for having me. I want to thank you very, very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And it's kind of an honor because you are one of the first people that I came across regarding the flat earth theory. So I I appreciate your ability to have an intelligible, uh, marketing approach to it. So thank you. (laughs) My, my pleasure. Very, very easy to to understand. So, uh, what I'd like to do is this show is specifically for, uh, people to get a grasp on personalities like yourself and where you come from and how you got into what you do. Mm-hmm. So if you want to go into a little bit, um, when was your, uh, what do you want to say? Awakening moment or my awakening moment. <laughs> well, I was always a conspiracy guy oh, yeah. and I should say, well, once I got to college, I was a conspiracy guy before that. I didn't believe in it. I didn't believe anybody would lie. I was super naive. Didn't even think about it. And then when I got to college, I started hearing different views because I grew up on a very rural island up in the middle of the Northwest, up Mm. near Seattle. And then I saw Oliver Stone's JFK Mm -hmm. in in the theater opening weekend. And I remember coming out of that movie and how the I'm I'm old enough to remember, you know, the you know, what, what the the temperature of the room was like and when the people came out of that theater they were angry they were really angry it is like oh, go- you could hear them muttering under their breath you know government can't be trusted government this government uh-huh. that and it was it was bad i mean and, and oliver stone i mean he just nailed it with yeah. that movie uh, you, now did he absolutely prove that would that be on a shadow of a doubt that there was no lone gunman no but there was so much he he created so much doubt in the official version right and then the following warren commission that it was it was ridiculous and that kind of started me on all the other paths that, that came down the line but of course like a lot of people i didn't look at them until usually after the fact mm-hmm. and i kept looking at them for the better part of 20 years and then I, pretty much I, I was really bored with a good period of you know if you if you if you're into them for a long time you you pretty much heard them you know yeah you know all the the a through z's of of conspiracy stuff and there's one out there that again you, you're never going to look at ever in a million years and that's flat earth because it's not even a conspiracy mm-hmm. it's ridiculous it's stupid yeah. it's ludicrous it's insane and nobody nobody's ever going to look at it and but in and i joked about this i said look there are people that will be they will try to convince you that all there are members of authority that are reptilian, you know, that, that are <laughs> they're lizard people. And yet those same people, you could come back at them and say that the earth is flat. Yeah. Don't you know we're living in the Truman Show? They will <laughs> laugh, literally laugh you out of the room. And yeah, I thought that yeah. was I thought that was really interesting. And what and I knew I was I was on to something because the first video that I clicked on because I thought, OK, well, I'll just finally look at it. Just it's on my bucket list, right? right. I will look at it as stuff. You know, there, there's an old saying: "Don't regret what you've done; regret what you haven't done." Yep. And I never looked at it. It's like, all right, you know what? Got to click on it. Going to look at it. I'm going to say I looked at it. That way, you know, it's it's off my list. And I remember getting a visceral response. Uh, I my body actually reacted to me clicking on it. I mean, I got flushed. I was huh. embarrassed to click on it. And I was alone in a room. Right? <laughs> and look, let, let's be honest here. If you're a guy, you've clicked on some pretty funky stuff out there on the internet, right? There's a lot of stuff you shouldn't be clicking on. 
and I've clicked on a lot of bad stuff. And yet this thing, I actually was getting embarrassed. Like, why, why am I getting, I caught myself. Hmm. It's going, why am I getting embarrassed? This is really weird. I've looked at uh, every conspiracy known to man. Why would this bother me more than most? Mm -hmm. And then when I got into it, I started digging into it. Then I realized why I, I, I was like the, the biggest trick is the one that everybody fell for. There's a, there's an old, I love sayings. I love quotes mm -hmm. and the PT Barnum from Ringling brothers, Barnum and Bailey circus. You know, he, he has, he has some really good quotes. One of them, of course, <clears throat> is a sucker is born every minute, but the, the lesser known one is that you can fool some of the people all of the time yeah, and yeah. all of the people, people some, some of the time, time yeah. but you can't fool all the people all the time right. but the, the the flat earth falls into this category where it is you this was something you actually could fool everybody mm -hmm. for a while you couldn't fool them forever and yeah. that was that was where you know i started down this journey and so when i know i'm getting a little ahead of myself but let me end the preface with this when i got into uh this i had to put myself i'm very empathetic meaning you know i put myself in other people's shoes mm -hmm. and so i said okay how would i hide the world if i could do it if i had unlimited resources how would i hide the world and that's what started me down this path interesting so, yeah. what was that first video that you clicked on and was it referred it was, to you or did you search it it was, it was, I, th I don't know if it was recommended for me or if it was just under related, but it was talking about, it was a German, it wasn't even in English. It was hmm. in German. It was talking about the flight routes in the Southern hemisphere don't make sense. Right, right. That was the first one. I was going, okay, well, I'm somewhat intrigued. I love good plot lines. I love good writing. I, I, I'm a, I, I, and I hate bad writing, mm -hmm. I hate bad plots. And so I, when I'm watching this thing, even though it was in German, I got the gist of it, which was the plane routes. If you're flying anywhere from the south, south of the equator to south of the equator, like uh, South America to Africa or Africa to Sydney, Australia or any anywhere down there, mm -hmm. you, the, the flight routes are really messed up. They don't make any sense. They're bouncing off connections that are way, way out of their way. And most of those connections go into the northern hemisphere. Right. And the guy ended the video saying that, you know, it's going to sound nuts, but it only works if the map is flat. Yeah. You know, if, if it's actually not a globe. And then, you know, after that, then I got into the uh, the Matt Boylan story, which which, again, was intriguing. And that's it. It wasn't again, wasn't enough to prove anything, which is what I love about the flat earth uh, theory is that everyone keeps building on everybody else's work. Yeah. And so then I started to say, OK, well. It's an interesting story. It's a good sci-fi movie of the week, but I, I think you know. Let's see if I can prove it out one mm -hmm. way or the other. And that was the worst mistake I ever made. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was because because it, it turns into a pan, Pandora's box. You're never gonna solve it. Yeah. Um. I, I the analogy I try to tell people is it's like watching somebody on a park bench with a children's puzzle box. And their and their their brow is curled and they're just they're crinkled up and they, they you can tell they're having a really hard time with it and you're looking at him going this guy is obviously a medical grade idiot mm -hmm. there's no way that he should be having such a hard time with such a simple puzzle mm -hmm. and finally eventually you see him put the puzzle put piece down and walk away from the bench right mm -hmm. and then you walk up to the bench and you go God, this this is a piece of cake. And you're looking at it, and the more you play with it, the more it morphs into something much more difficult. Yeah. Until finally, then eventually you realize what was going on in his head. Yep. And then you put it down and you walk away. But it doesn't matter if you put it down because it's it's in your head now. Mm -hmm. Because now you're trying to work it out in your head. You can never get rid of it. It's I, I have joked, but I think the analogy is is quite accurate, which is it's like getting a mar trying to get a marble out of a paint can because yeah, they actually put real marbles in those damn things or some most most time it's just marbles not even ball bearings mm -hmm. you can't get it out you've got to resolve it one way or the other yeah and it's amazing to watch people to go through this because they, they go crazy i mean there was yeah. there was a thing i posted the other day i wasn't even on that podcast it was a uh, ruined heroes and the co-host was losing his mind as this thing he was so it was such an affront 
to his sense. He considered himself a, a, a fairly well-educated guy. Mm. And yeah, I mean, the guy, obviously, he's, he's t- taking a lot of English. I don't know if he's got a master's in English. But he was, he was doing a great job of describing the pain that he was going through. Mm. Because it was a cross between the world must be insane and everybody that believes in this are seven different flavors of idiots. <laughs> Uh, but it was it was amazing watching him go through it. So I don't know what it is, what it's what it's happened to him now. Maybe he's crawled into a bottle somewhere. <laughs> but uh, anyway, sorry, I was off track. No, forever, that's forever. pretty okay. Yeah, I just I've actually lost several friends over the last <laughs> three years yeah. just by asking questions. Hey, what do you think about this? Are you a fucking idiot? Yeah. I mean, I mean, just yesterday, I was talking to a really good friend of mine. We're actually still friends, so that's cool. Known her since yeah. high school. She's a physicist, a chemical biologist, and blah, blah, blah. Very, very intelligent. Definitely I love having long, long, hour-long discussions with her. And I asked her, hey, look into this for me. I'm having this guy on tomorrow. Let me know what you think. And the first sure. quote that she comes back with is Aristotle's little observation of the... Now, she said this. and I, This is where I got the her uh, level of cognitive dissonance in here. Is yeah. that she said... Uh, Aristotle's quote is that he observed the shadow of the earth uh-huh. passing in front of the moon, the round shadow. I was like, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. A round shadow. Shadows can be three-dimensional? Well, really? technically three-dimensional-ish. And yeah. what she's talking about, there's two different arguments there. One is, of course, the curve. I, and I've, I've heard literally, I haven't heard a new argument in probably a year. So, because there's there's only so many arguments you can throw at you, because exactly. science only has so many tools in the toolbox. One of which is, of course, it's not round shadow; it's a curved shadow. Yeah. So that's why I said it was a circular shadow. Is what I said. Yeah, actually. circular-ish. I mean, it produces a, a a bleeding edge curved shadow on the moon, mm-hmm. which again, it, which is fun. That's that's one of the arguments. The other one is the sticks and shadows argument, which yeah. is you, know, you take two sticks and you put them in different places, and, the, and you can ge- you can gauge where an object is in the sky and its relationship and using trigonometry and all this fun stuff. Mm-hmm. But, but the curve shadows, the, the part I try to argue with people is look, you're in, this is something that we can display right now on a much smaller scale. I, and I'm, I'm not trying to be glib or, or trying to downplay it, but look, you go to a planetarium. We'll, we'll say Neil deGrasse Tyson's the Hayden planetarium, the one mm-hmm. that he runs. I go, how do you think they put that same shadow up when when they do it? They do waxing and waning crescents and comets and stars and blood moons and the whole nine yards. And not only that, but they can do much, much, much more. Mm-hmm. They can do. Uh, they can put your face on the moon. Yep. They can write your name out in stars. They can do all this stuff. It's just a projection. And they say, well, it, it, it was. It, it, you, you're you're um, you're talking about a planetarium. I go, yeah, I am. <clears throat> I go. When you walk out of that one, how do you know you're just not in a much, much bigger one? Exactly. That's the part. And I, and I know people, it's it's tough because your imagination, some people's imagination will not go that far. Yeah. It will yeah. not stretch that far. I go, look, the, which is why I use movies like The Truman Show as a reference. I go, look, if Hollywood could build, I have no doubt they could for several billion dollars. Mm-hmm. If you could build a sports dome that was 20 miles wide just to create a reality show and you could convince someone in, in there that they were you know that the world the line from the movie is we we uh accept the world which is presented to us right. then who's to say that uh a civilization that is much more advanced than us couldn't build one of those domes no doubt. Was thousands of miles wide who's yeah. to say it couldn't happen say well it could but that's movies that's fiction i'm going oh, come on guys <laughs> think <laughs> think a little bigger than that Think, think like this of all the fantastic fiction we have we have written over the years thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of books and stories didn't you think kind of like the lottery that one of those <laughs> stories was gonna be right you didn't know which one nobody knows which lottery ticket's gonna be right but yeah. some some, some schmuck out there it wrote this story already and he it turned out he was right yeah you know the the the, the saying uh, even a, a broken clock is right twice a day yep and so that's that's what I put out there. I go, it can be done. You've just got to think bigger mm-hmm. than than uh, than the norm. And and for the most part, people are, are starting to get it. But yeah, the overall visual, which is why I'm starting to get more and more visual aids. Um, 
from people that are manufacturing manufacturing you know the 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 round disc with or without the dome mm-hmm. just because it, it you know picture is worth a thousand words like look just slap it down in front of them okay here so yeah. you, here, here goes your first 20 questions yep. they can just throw them out it's like well, what about water falling off the edge or <laughs> what about this with planes going around in a circle and, oh geez dude I, those those ones kill me but it's amazing the initial response questions that we get because they're all they're like the first five or six are always the same yeah. water falling off the edge yeah. boats going over the horizon you fly a plane far enough you'll come back to the same point uh <laughs> stuff like that it's it's amazing that and again a lot of them they uh it's it's stuff that we hear it's it's hearsay yeah, the boats going exactly. over the horizon thing do you know there's never been a test for that no nope. you know there's there's never been a scientific people say oh boats go over the horizon goes so your science showed it. really name me the year <laughs> exactly name me the guy show me the study <laughs> Science is really proud about putting a name and a date to the test. Yeah. yeah. You know, like the Michelson Morley, Morley experiment or yeah. Aries failure. You know, they love putting that. That's the whole goal of science is to attach your name to a publication. Yep. It's never, it's never happened. It's all just something that's like, well, we've, we've observed it. I saw a boat go far enough and it's not there anymore. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, but now it's not gone. That's the difference. I'm going here. Take a look through this camera. Zoom in. Oh, look, the boat's back. How can it be back? But refraction, back. refraction. Yeah, well, ref- yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't. I mean, it's a clear image, and fine if you if you want to do. You can't say refra- refraction for every single item. Right. To where now I'm coming back at science and I'm saying, okay, let's go a different route. Show me an object at say 150 miles or less, because after mm-hmm. that, you know, then you're looking through the atmosphere is just too thick. Because again, your average person doesn't even know. It's like, look, you're breathing 80% nitrogen yeah. and only 20% oxygen. But if, show me an object at 150 miles or less that you can never see from the beach. Right. That you can never, ever see. A stationary object far away. I don't care what it is. An island of this. And you can't show me something where the weather is always crappy. It's like, oh, look, I can't see. It's like, dude, it's a freaking thunderstorm out there. You can't see <laughs> through that. But show me an object. It's never it's never going to happen. Yeah. We've always been able to see it now because of all the new camera technology. That's really what's changed in the last 10 years. So. Yeah, I was talking to somebody the other day about um, why well, I introduced them to Google Earth. Yeah. And uh, so they're going through it like, okay, so zoom on this spot. Uh, okay, do you want roads? Do you want lights? Do you want clouds? And I was like, hold on, stop right there. Do you want clouds? Yeah. What does that tell you? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And- oh, well, heck, man. Look, at there's so many cool. I will say this. The, the community has now accumulated so many fun factoids mm-hmm. over, over the last couple of years. In fact, it's barely even been two years for me. Most people have been in a year. I don't, but the um, the blue marble shot that they use for the first iPhone that's oh, yeah. one of those little factoids I love throwing at people. It's like, look, do you realize that the blue marble shot, the very first iPhone, they had to create, they had to build that from scratch. And mm-hmm. they used a NASA consultant to build it from scratch. Yeah. And he clone tooled the hell out of that thing with yeah. clouds. It's but Photoshop, when you ask him, but, but, but he it has had to be. <laughs> the, the what? That where he's saying like it's Photoshop, but but, but it, it has, has to be. be. <laughs> and, and the point and the point was because there were no good images of Earth right. to use for the iPhone, and that was that was not that long ago. And I, I can't remember what year the first iPhone came out, but several years prior to that, and I, I love telling this story. Back in two thousand, again, talk about an opportunity blown on my part because again, you don't know. Mm-hmm. Was when I was trying to put a bunch of cool earth images, iconic earth images on different monitors for my tech support team that I was running. Mm-hmm. And I go and you know, b- do a Boolean search on, on the internet. And of course the internet w- wasn't like it is now, but still it was the internet and it was up and running. Mm-hmm. And I go, you know, show me earth from space, you know, show me earth pictures from space, you know, space pictures of earth, whatever combo, no matter what it was, I just got rows and rows and rows and rows of the exact same picture the apollo 17 blue marble shot Mm -hmm. and i thought i was doing something wrong i was going and honestly literally i staring at the screen going nasa you suck yeah how can you be how can your internet presence be this terrible you only have one picture of the earth didn't know at the time for not only then but even up to 15 years after that there was still only one picture of the earth yep that's why that they had to build one for the phone and you're thinking well that what does that prove i'm going Dude, what that proves is 
uh, is that for 43 years, there was only one picture of the Earth. Yeah. And we're talking modern day, 1972 up until two years ago, literally only one shot of the Earth from space. That is mind boggling to the yeah. point where I, I go into a, a guy, you know, talk to a, like a scientist guy and his, his response was, well, who cares? They, they didn't need they didn't need a picture of the Earth. Going, what are you talking about? I go, science lives for that. <laughs> yeah, that, it, there should be not only should there be so many pictures that the countless pictures of the Earth from space, there should be a 24 seven round the clock HD channel all the time mm -hmm. that all it does is run the earth from space. Yeah. That's all think. it does. There would be science organizations would line up to sponsor that. Mm -hmm. And yet it's the exact opposite. And, and you know, again, once you start digging into it, you realize why it's because they were scared to death of they, they got lucky with the Apollo 17 one, mm -hmm. the, the, the first blue marble shot. And they were scared to death of making another because they thought they were going to get caught. Yeah. They thought that, that it wouldn't line up. And then when they were releasing and, and they, they should have been scared because mm -hmm. the, the shots that were released, even the partials that were released between 72 and two years ago were horrible. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it also not to go off on a rant, but it also <laughs> explains because when people say, well, you know, why do the Americans, why, why would the Americans, it wasn't why the Americans would fake the space program that they had to, but it was why nobody else followed the Americans. Right. The Russians, the Chinese, the, the Europeans, nobody else walked on the moon. And the reason was, is because whoever did that, would it would be their own different separate production facility. Yep. And you would have, they'd have to match perfectly what the Americans did. Yeah. And if they didn't, it, does, it doesn't obvious. take long. There's, the, there's so many nerds out there that would come forward and say, well, you know, this, the moon rover actually was at this angle over here is facing and and it doesn't match up why how is it not and that's it that's it it's over at this yeah. point you know, once it goes on the internet the the line um the anne hathaway line from uh, the, the last batman i know i shouldn't quote anne hathaway but, but she's, <laughs> weird anne hathaway reference where she was telling uh, uh bruce is... wayne everything sticks oh yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 and you cannot you make a mistake now or whatever you say once it gets on the internet chances are it's going to get out on the internet. There are a few yep. cases, and I, if you ever want to know them, I'll let you know, but but the, where they've been scrubbed is about as best as they can, but for the most part, everything sticks. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. Um, I had a thought the other day, um, and I was hoping to get your opinion on this. I haven't seen it anywhere, anyone talk about it yet, but I recently had my star chart read by a Vedic okay. coach. Okay. And this, I don't know if you know about much about the, the Vedic Indian past or whatever, but it, it goes back several millennia and, you know, they base everything off a fixed star system. Okay. And this chart was probably the most accurate thing that I've ever come across. Okay. Um, she was also able to predict several things that happened within that week, like the North Korea missile launch and whatnot. So and then I started thinking like, well, if it's so accurate and it's based off a fixed star system and so many people believe in it, why not say like, well, if the stars are fixed, then hey, at least a geocentric, a geocentric, geocentric. model, at yeah. least, very least. Yeah, but they can't yeah, even comprehend fact, I, that. It's like I'm trying to put it together. Like, hey, theory of relativity. Ever hear of it? You know, the movement. We've got motion supposedly, so everything should be a far. We should have different stars every night. Yeah. Well, it takes place over such a long time. Cognitive dissonance. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah, and and I, I'll I'll I've 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 gone toe to toe with people that'll do that where they'll say we're, what we're talking about. If anyone doesn't know, is called parallax, mm -hmm. parallax scrolling. It's the same th thing when you're driving down a highway. Everyone's seen it, where the mailboxes are going fast past and the telephone poles really fast off the mm -hmm. side mirror, but the mountains in the distance are going by slowly, and that's because you know one they're far away, and two they're much bigger. So you, you get that weird sense of some things are scrolling by quickly, some things not as quickly, and then other things really, really slow. And with the stars, we should see this to some extent, meaning mm -hmm. there are some stars. Again, you know, ask mainstream science. If you believe mainstream science, they say some stars are as close as five year, light years away. I think the closest is four. If, yeah. if you believe that. But some are millions of light years away. Mm -hmm. That's really, really far away. And the Earth is not only, yeah, fine. The Earth is spinning around the sun at, at uh, 60,000 miles an hour, if you believe that. 
and the solar system is moving at half a million miles an hour and the Milky Way galaxy is also traveling at an unbelievable speed. Right. Well, if all those th things are happening, eventually you're going to see some sort of parallax. And which, what that means is, is that stars are going to be out of place. Yeah. They're going to move over time. And they say, and, and of course, science will come back and say, well, the distances are so vast that you're never, ever going to see it in your lifetime. I go, fine. If you're going to take that far, then explain to me how, at least in the last 2,000 years, if not longer, the constellations, the, which we all know, you know, the the uh, the astrology as constellation chart, that's never changed. Exactly. The lion never morphed into something else. The mm -hmm. Cancer never morphed into something else. Gemini never morphed into something else. They're they're all the same constellations. Not even not even a hint of of movement what whatsoever and in fact i had an interview with somebody uh, it's just a couple of days ago and she was really big into the whole astrology thing mm -hmm. and i i had that question put to me literally in the first two weeks but i i reinforced it to her which was isn't the flatter thing killing astrology i go no no not at all i go the only difference is that the stars in question are not um, un unmeasurable distances away they're right. very very close I, they're still there you know you can still read them it's still a gigantic clock system slash prediction system slash whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. it's still a very beautiful thing but it's way more intimate now it's it's yours it belongs to this world and nothing else yeah so that's yeah have you always been on a certain point of view as far as the flat earth theory goes or has your ideas morphed and are they still morphing and developing. the only thing that i'm more no for the most part i've been i have not backtracked on anything with the exception of because what did i know two years ago seems like such a long time yeah that uh that i was a big fan of the orlando ferguson map oh, with the, yeah. from the 1800s which showed a and i used to say roulette wheel but i can't say roulette wheel anymore because People again, no, nothing is missed on the internet. You add all all the numbers on a roulette table. What do they add up to? Yeah, six hundred sixty-six. <laughs> True story. Go figure. I didn't even did not know. So now I have to say like hubcap. So where it's got, <laughs> where, where it's got, and most and now of course now it's all alloy wheels. Nobody has hubcaps anymore. Yeah, or not like the old school hubcaps. So, but with the hubcaps, you get this little sort of dip. And I and I said, well, you know, there could be a little bit of a curvature. And people were coming back literally in the first couple months saying, dude, there's no curvature. I mean, not not even a, a glimmer mm -hmm. of it. And so now that's that's the only thing. It's like you know what. I'll, I'll go with that. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I didn't lose any sleep over it. Yeah. Because yeah. again, what did what did I know? My stuff when I put it out there was was really just a call to the scientific community, saying, "Look, I'm a big science fan, and for whatever reason, I can't prove the globe anymore. Right. Not that I could prove it in the first place. I think that's what everyone assumes. Everyone assumes they can prove the globe, mm -hmm. but when they try for the first time, they realize how short they come up." Yeah. And uh, that's the, again, that's that's where people run into problems. And speaking of which, uh, you've got that series, the Flat Earth Clues. Yeah. How, how did you come up with that? How did you develop that? Was that kind of like your own personal journey of how you? Came no, up? I don't know. Honestly, and and I'll tell the same story that I did. I woke up. I I was wrestling. I hadn't written a freaking letter mm. until February tenth of. 2015 literally had no notes no nothing i was just wrestling with it with my in in my head which i can do i i don't mind doing that you know i can i can let things sit in different parts i've got a big head <laughs> and so i can i can kind of shift stuff around in there and i woke up that night and it was like if you if you guys know movies jerry Maguire, where he wakes up in the middle of the night and he just has this epiphany yeah and he just sits down at the computer and starts typing and that's exactly what happened to me wow. i sat I, I in fact it was weird because i woke up it was like 3 3 3 30 in the morning where i woke up and i said and i had the narrative mm -hmm. i had the first clue in or the just the introduction in my head in my own voice which was even people oh you're hearing voices now no 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 it's my <laughs> voice i was narrating i was actually reading it out loud in my head i was going okay this is how it sounds in real time mm -hmm. and i'm in the shower going yep yep and then we go here and then we go here and i sat down on the computer never made a decent video before in my life <laughs> i had a youtube account for years and i just started typing 
typed out the first thing i said okay well because remember because when you're new to youtube you can only make videos uh they're like 15 minutes or less right and then you know at, that's one of their their trial basis and then they they let you go up from there so that's why all the clues were so short mm -hmm. because i didn't you know i hadn't done anything with youtube yet so i sat down i typed it all i said okay i'm gonna narrate it ne ne never never had a doubt what i was gonna do that was the weird part and then i sat down you know crappy gaming microphone read the <laughs> read the clues you know tried to make sure i didn't make any mistakes so I, I you know i did it in like paragraph by paragraph and if i made a mistake i corrected it and then grabbed a whole bunch of slides you know just whatever came to mind uh it was something my my sister and my mother and i kind of have a they're they're both avid photographers but mm -hmm. i'm not but i i can detect i can pick up on on good images good mm -hmm. imagery so i grab i just grab slides i i'm thinking reading the words off to the side i'm going yeah that'll work that'll work mm -hmm. that'll work and put the slides together in a free program called windows live movie maker oh yeah slapped it together threw it up on the internet and honestly thought it's like okay let's see who's and i thought maybe some university professor is going to write back and say, okay, here it is, 100% proof that the earth is a globe. You can stop making videos now and <laughs> shut down your account. That's what I was waiting for. I was, and I was holding my breath and it didn't happen. So, I, and so the very next day, I'm in another clue and I did the first eight clue, seven, seven clues in eight days. Nice. I just, you know, one after, did the same routine, woke up early, get, you know, sat down because it takes me pretty much all day to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to write it out, then, then do the narrative, then do the slides and put it together and, and upload it. And, but then, then my confidence started building to where people, then, then all, then the phone calls started coming in. Cause I was again, dumb enough to give out my real phone number and my real email address <laughs> and my real name. And so people started calling me. In fact, I had interview requests almost immediately going, going, okay, you're talking about this, you know, you're, you're serious about this. I'm mm -hmm. like, yeah, 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 I'm why. But amazing how many people would say, this is not a joke, right? I go, no, that's what I said in the first 10 seconds of my videos. It's yeah. not a joke. And then the subject matter experts started coming in, and then I knew that I was onto something that was way, way more credible than even I had thought. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, and then I stopped after, you know, it, but again, it, it seemed it's like such a natural process to where I stopped at clue 11, made a clue 12 just to kind of get a feel of what was going out there. But after that, I didn't need to really make any more clues because so many people were jumping on and, and doing yeah. their own stuff. That, yeah. that I mean, like the curvature, the eight inches per mile squared thing. Mm -hmm. I never touched on that in the clues. And now there's so many videos that, that touch on that or analyzing all the slow-mo footage of, of nasa didn't yeah. do any of that i mean people just ran it, it it seemed to create or helped create more of a systemic effect to where now this thing isn't going anywhere right it's just getting weirder and bigger and anyway so um for the people out there i highly recommend check, checking out the flat earth clues those are on your channel right Oh, well, you know, that was another thing. I didn't, I, they're the, the biggest hits, the ones that get the most hits aren't even on my channel. That's yeah, the weird I part. That. Cause I, cause they were so short. I didn't make you make a playlist mm. and P, I didn't even know how to compile them together at the time. And so other people grabbed them. There was one guy did it called under the dome full documentary. Mm -hmm. There was another guy that grabbed it, uh, lumped them all together, called it. They are hiding God with the greatest lie ever. That's which was a very, and both of those i think are over two and a half million hits each wow. which is which is amazing i know they're, they're monstrous i still get people emails oh yeah i saw your movie and there's an imdb <laughs> listing for for my stuff really for this. oh yeah the flat earth clues movie but i didn't make a movie i just made the clues but, <laughs> and and i didn't even monetize the channel i made it i still do creative commons licensing because i don't mm -hmm. want i'm never going to copyright strike anybody use whatever you want and yeah. I, I've, I've sent it to everybody but even now, after the rules have changed, I still think you're getting paid like a thousand bucks per million hits. Oh, wow. So I've given I've given away thousands of dollars no to kidding. people, which is good. I mean, the exposure was totally worth it. Yeah, because why? Why look? The message honestly should be should be absolutely free, which is why, why I, I give out too. you know like my survival guide free and crap like that. But uh, it, it was great to watch. Yeah, so flat Earth clues. You can, if you type it in, you'll you'll run into my stuff. But you might even run into it without typing in flat earth clues. Somebody will say, you know, the, it's 
flat earth truth. I mean, there's, mm-hmm. there's, I'm still finding new channels that have made hundreds of thousands of hits and little blurbs here and there. So great. Happy, happy for them. Yeah. It gets the message out for sure. Yeah. So, uh, could you quickly go through, uh, the steps, maybe like five or however many you want. So that people get an idea of what they're coming up for. You mean the clues? Yeah. Oh, sure. The, um, so when you're looking at the clues and, uh, okay, where should I, where should I start? There's a, there's a brief introduction. I shouldn't say 12, 14 minutes of just what, you know, where kind of where your frame of mind is. Mm-hmm. And that, and that is, you know, just try to get you wrap your head around the fact that you're on a globe because you were told you're on a globe. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the, the biggest thing you got to remember which is because everyone's going to say the same thing. Oh, science and gravity. They throw out right. these weird, just generic terms. Like it's going to make flat earth go away. Yeah. It's like you're back. You know, the power of Christ compels you. <laughs> but that's not what happened. You can't just yell science. Yeah. That's not, yeah. you know, cause and seriously, I've, I've heard that many, many times. Look like they'll stop and they'll go, well, but science. Mm-hmm. I'm going, what about science? Right. What, what about, you know, the, and then I come back. Okay, fine. Science tells you that uh, fire is wet. Oops, wow. Fire <laughs> burns. There you go. It's early. Was the, that a Freudian uh, fire, slip? Fire, <laughs> fire, fire, uh, what's in this glass? Fire, fire burns. Water is wet. You drop something, it falls to the ground. That appears to be something they call gravity. Right. These are something we can test right now. Anybody can test these things, right? You, you put a, a pot of water on a stove and turn it up at sea level to 212 degrees. It's going to boil. Yeah. These are things we can test. But when it comes to the shape of your world, this is something you're told. Mm-hmm. And I know that people are going to, going to, going to, you know, initially what the, so the defense against this, and I, I'm kind of going off track, but I'll, That's I'll okay. go into the other stuff a little bit because I could talk about this stuff forever. The, um, the, the defense to that is, well, yeah, but NASA told us. I'm going, okay, fine. If if you want to put that much faith in the United States military, and that's right. what NASA is, they're DOD. If you want to put that much faith in them, NASA. that's fine. I counter with, you know, I treat it like a chess game in some ways. Yeah. Uh, I counter with this. All right, fine. You say that NASA showed you your pictures, but it's not like since the first picture was in 1972, it's not like we woke up one day in 1972 and just realized it was a globe. Mm-hmm. We knew for 450 years before that. That it was a globe right so how did you know before nasa i'm not saying this to the older people younger people can 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 also look at this how did you know before nasa and then they start struggling because mm-hmm. then it comes down to scientific experiments that nobody's up on it's like well it's just sticks and shadows and curves <laughs> things in the it. moon and uh, well there's time zones and it's like okay that, that's good does that prove that the earth is a globe and, and, and people well even times sorry to interrupt but even time yeah. zones if you look at the time zone lines they're not they don't match the uh the latitude lines on a globe they're all yeah. over the place it, it will for me it doesn't it wouldn't matter anyway well yeah because yeah, yeah. for me it's it's look it's a directional light source if the light source mm-hmm. is only 50 miles wide then it's not going to be casting again you got to Everyone keeps it's like, well, if the sun is an omnidirectional light source it's going to shine everywhere at once it's that bright it's going not if it's really small mm-hmm and it's really directional. And eventually they, they, they run out of ideas. I go, look, let's face it until I'm stealing a line from Matt Boylan here until you get high enough, until you have the tech to get high enough to take a picture of the globe from space. How do you know it's a globe? Right. You don't, you don't know for sure. You absolutely do not know. You can say if you're science, you know, and I, I say science, I know I mean scientists, but we're going to say science. Uh, science will say, well, yeah, we're 99.99999% sure. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. You want to bet your life on that? What about that? What if, what if you roll those dice, you yeah. know, those million sided dice and, and you really going to bet your life on that because you don't know. And they, and they say, well, sure we know. I go, really? Cause you, you didn't know about the core of the earth. Mm-hmm. And that one you've been pushing on people for a long, long time now. Yeah. They can only they, get like what? Seven miles down so far. Eight. Eight miles. Eight, eight, but so, yeah. So again, you guys want to, if you're new to this, you look at any textbook, you could, you know, or punch it up on the internet. 
where where it's like type in core of the earth and we all know you know it's like okay it's divided into thousand layer seg sections perfect right. per perfect 1000 <laughs> mile sections where it's like it goes from red to orange to yellow to white and you know this molten center and, and you think okay well so it's 4000 miles down to the center of the earth right how deep have you drilled yeah 2000 miles 1000 mm -hmm. 100 10 mm -hmm. no you drill down 8 miles mm -hmm. that's b uh, barely even a tenth of a per of 1% right so how are you describing the core of the earth and they say well we don't well, you know we're extrapolating we're expanding i'm going then why don't you put that disclaimer at the bottom of those freaking drawings exactly. that you're giving to people exactly. because if you don't here's what happens if you don't put a disclaimer saying we don't actually know or i don't know put a giant question mark in the middle of the globe because that's really what you should do but yeah. you're not going to do that because you're science and you're arrogant what happens is is that you say well what's the harm in them going because if an eight-year-old kid sees that diagram eventually they're going to think it's absolute fact yeah because you that's haven't put in school a disclaimer on it and they're saying well what's the point i'm going the point is is the same thing with the globe as a model which mm -hmm. is until you absolutely know you don't know and then you're going okay what's your point my point is is that if you've been telling people for 450 years that it was a globe and you got up finally high enough to take a look at it and it wasn't would you tell people yeah no exactly. you wouldn't you know, you wouldn't. Science is not going to ever do anything against science. Go, oh, so, you know, science has integrity. They, you know, they're they're incorruptible. And all that's yeah. not true. You, yeah. you know that. I could give you ten different examples of, of that. I go. The equivalent would be if the Catholic Church found out that the Virgin Mary was not actually named Mary. She was named Susan. <laughs> Right. If she was named Susan, and who knows, she may be named Susan. If she was named Susan, would they tell the congregation, the world congregation? Mm -hmm. No, they wouldn't, because they've it's in too many. They'd have to redo too many things. It would yeah. cause such a shakeup, yeah. and people would be going, "Well, if you screwed up her Susan, what else have you screwed up? Is there anything else going on here?" Well, I also you know I read in a book somewhere. I can't remember exactly where. I think it was like the expected one or something. But Mary was actually a title given to princess type of figures there you go the, the, the you, you get what i'm saying yeah it's 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 one of those things if it's if it's too big of a lie has been going along on you know whether it's deliberate or not mm -hmm. if deception has been going on for too long you're better off just keeping it going yeah because you know you're going to catch flack the it's mm -hmm. the um uh, the jilted wife scenario that is if you have an affair on your wife for a year you might be able to pull it off with forgiveness. You know, you know, you might be able to get out of it. You've been having an affair for 20 years. <laughs> you might as well make it 30. Yeah. Because there's, there's nothing you can do. You're, you're going to, it's, you're going to run into a lot of grief when mm -hmm. that happens. And that's what science didn't want. It's like, look, we can't tell the population this. It's in fact, um, Gary Larson, the, the guy from the cartoon strip, uh, the far side, oh, yeah, he did a great cartoon on it years ago yeah. where the astronauts are looking at the earth from space. Very profound, actually, where they're looking for the space and the earth is actually just a child's balloon floating through space. <laughs> right. And they're looking at each other It's a simple line it goes, yeah, we really should probably keep this one under wraps. <laughs> because why, why would you tell anybody? You know, you're going to potentially upset. That was the other question, again, that, that keeps coming up with, with me. Again, not to go off on a little tear, but I, I got to get this one out. Because every week I get an email saying, or people will say, well, why does it matter? Once it gets too big for their imagination, we'll say, well, why should I care? Yeah. Why does it matter if it's a globe or if it's flat? I'm going, dude, it doesn't matter until the day it does. Right. I, you can... You can right. say what you want about, no, I wouldn't care. You know, I wouldn't care. This, these are the same people that say, you know, if I win the lottery, I'm still going to work. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, I've heard that before. You really should look at the stats on that because everyone that says that, unless they absolutely love their job, they're looking for an excuse to quit. Oh, yeah. yeah. So if, you know, why does it not, why does it matter? Because everyone would be talking about it. That's mm -hmm. all anyone would talk about for years, entire our entire civilization landscape would mm -hmm. transform over the course of decades to adjust to the new model. Yeah. Not to mention the overwhelming big question is, and that is if it's just a ball flying through space, not to get off on the religious side, but if it's a ball flying through space, there's no proof of intelligent design. Exactly. Right. But if you're on a flat plane enclosed or not, 
with borders, that means it was constructed. Mm -hmm. And if it was constructed, it, I'm not going to put a name on God, but there's a lot of people that would, you know, eight out of yeah. 10 people in the world fall under one of the big five religions. They would look at it as divine and then you're going to have to deal with it. So don't yeah. tell yeah. me you're not going to care. You're not an atheist. Well, you know, planet comes from, a, I think it's a Greek or Latin word, planete, which just means a flat plane. There you go. So I found that sure. interesting. Going back uh, that, to the moon. By the way, that's the other argument I, I also hear, which is if all the all oh, the other things are... in the sky are spheres, yeah. <laughs> then we're a sphere. Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, Come on. Really? I go, I go actually, really? that's, that's one of the better ones. It's like, okay, all right, I'll give you that. Unless, the, you know, the whole thing was meant to, to be the illusion. Yeah. I go, you go to you go to the planetarium, the moon looks pretty spherical. Yep. But you're not on a sphere when you're watching it from a planetarium. You're in a dome. Yeah. And it's like, look, it's just meant to the the reasoning, of course. Then then of course finally the question comes by is like, why? Why would you create the illusion of, mm -hmm. of the world? Go because human beings hate confinement. Yeah. Hate it. Hate it so much. I mean, jail is, is like, you know, it is one of our biggest deterrents to just about everything. Mm -hmm. People don't like being confined. We, it doesn't matter how beautiful and how wonderful the confinement is. We find out we're in an enclosed world. That's, just, that's all. There's so many people. That's all they'd care about. Yeah. No I doubt. I have a little question. So uh, going back to the moon really quick. Um, yeah. I, th I believe that you're more of the opinion that it's like a hologram or a holograph or that type of well no i'm actually on the other side where i still believe it's a three-dimensional object of some sort okay cool then this will work okay so check this out if the earth was a sphere yeah and you look at the moon what do we always yeah. see the face that always faces us right yeah we always with, see the exact same face of the moon with yeah. craters so how do asteroids or comets or whatever manage to hit that side if it's always facing us when it's supposed to be our protector? Yeah. But Good point. if it's flat, then and there are comets or asteroids that say they could fly over us hitting that side of the moon. Oh, you, if you even want to go that far. I mean, I, 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 I dare to say that the craters were put on there as more of a artist decoration part well no, no doubt no. yeah but to help people grasp oh but to help people yeah the the craters cannot hit at 90 degree angles right if the earth is if if the earth is shielding it from us now of mm -hmm. course then science will come back and say yeah but we don't know how long the moon has been locked into our oh, you know locked, locked in perfectly mm -hmm. to where we only see one side of the moon I'm going, well, it's been for at least hundreds of years, if not a thousand years. Mm -hmm. So but they say, well, yeah, well, it could be millions of years. And all those craters could have happened there, you know, way beforehand. It's like, yeah, I guess. But, you know, that I know, but I hear you on that. You know, for me, I still think the better question is why are all the craters, you, why are none of them skid marks? Why are they all perfect 90 degree angle craters? Yeah, like they just happen to fall right down on it right down on it and if you're going to go down that road you know the the question is like what about meteors i'm um, going well what about them because actually it's a great question i'd love to bring up meteors to nasa mm -hmm. how in the world are no meteors hitting anything up there ever yeah it wouldn't what, really what? take a whole big size it could just be a pebble that could take out no, a satellite no, no, no yeah you don't need an armageddon or a deep impact movie thing you need all you need is something the size of a nickel yeah and it it's good it can punch through anything it could punch through if it's going at tw we'll say minimum twenty thousand miles an hour. Mm -hmm. That is so beyond ballistic speeds that it would slice through the the ISS like it wasn't even there. Yeah, and yet nobody there seems to be concerned in the slightest. They're playing guitars. They're running around gorilla suits. They're doing. They just did a draft pick from space. Oh, they're geez. wearing khakis and socks and polo shirts. <laughs> that they do not care. The, and and forget about the ISS for a second. None of these nickels, we're, even the smallest meteors could destroy a satellite. Yeah. You know, satellite, if they were there. And yet you don't hear, you know, AT&T lost a satellite today or, you know, uh, serious, uh, what is it? serious, serious satellite radio. Uh, Stop broadcasting because it got smacked. Mm -hmm. the, the whole concept of the movie um, Gravity with uh, Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. The whole concept of that movie 
spoiler alert is that that sat one satellite got hit spun around and hit a whole bunch of other satellites and it turned into this big cascading sheet of jagged metal yeah that should have already happened by now yeah uh, we, we have yearly meteor showers that should be beating the crap out of satellites and yet you never hear satellites getting you know they all die of natural causes oh mm -hmm. the battery went down and blah, blah, blah. nobody gets hit if it's such a parking uh nightmare up there then why once the first one hits they would all go down yeah. and they would all just you know it would you wouldn't be able to it, we would create a layer of metal up there that would make satellite satellite uh launches impossible yeah, I remember several times, you know, whenever you call your cell phone provider and it'll sometimes say, we're experiencing difficulty in your area with coverage. And, yeah. you know, you just look look out in front of you. What's closer to your line of sight, a satellite or a cell tower? Yeah. Why would you oh, have? I've, I talked to a cell guy the, one, the, other, the other day on one of the shows where he was saying that when they hook up, when they triangulate, mm -hmm. when they set up a new cell tower and they have to hook up to a quote unquote satellite, they always just put in a different cell tower. Yeah. The, the senior guys keep saying the same thing. It's like, oh, yeah. It, it's like, well, wait, aren't we ever linking up to actual satellites? It's like, no, cell towers do the same thing. Yep. Well, if you keep doing that and you keep doing it on land, then that's what it is it's just everything's ground based yeah including of course the the mythical gps system which supposedly has 32 orbiting satellites and should have blanket coverage everywhere yet apparently doesn't work in any ocean if there's no island within 150 miles of it and it doesn't um that's interesting but yeah that was one of the clues sorry i i'm kind of off off track but that one of the clues i did was was uh, there was a two-part series clue seven and clue nine clue seven was called the long haul which talked about planes how they disappeared right or well, no 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 i'm sorry long haul was planes the routes were really screwed up and that you couldn't find any non-stops in the southern hemisphere right and then people came back and said no no there's like five non-stops in the entire southern hemisphere literally there's like five Wow. And they kept quoting me like Qantas Flight 64 and crap like that. Mm -hmm. And so I started watching these planes because you can you can watch them on Flight Tracker and, and and see these things, the little graphics. And they kept disappearing once they got offshore, like 150, 200 miles, literally disappearing off the screen. And their latitude and longitude coordinates would go into estimated or approximated mode. Huh. And I'm going, how is, wait, what? And so I called Clue 9 the magic show because basically... And it's not just the Southern Hemisphere. It's also in the Northern Hemisphere. If you're flying from San Francisco to Hawaii, mm -hmm. same thing happens because there's no islands between the, uh, San Francisco and Hawaii. Once you get offshore, a certain uh, certain point... Out of range of the ground-based radar. Out of range of the ground-based radar. Yeah. And so it tells me, it's like, okay, so GPS, which is also uh, a Department of Defense system developed in 1998, was just the old... Department of Defense system called Loran, L-O-R-A-N. They just slapped a, a different sticker on it, charged huh. more money, boosted the the signal stuff, and did what they could. But it was a, it was a great cover. And again, the reinforcement was great. Oh, GPS, we've got a whole bunch of satellites. That's all mm -hmm. they have to do is say things like, "Oh, we've got the ISS up there. We've got satellites," yeah. which means there's space. You know, all these probes. So, well, you know, look at the face on Mars. Those are the those are the sneaky stories. You know, mm -hmm. stuff like face on Mars and hexagon on the top of Saturn. And oh, look, here's a new thing of Pluto. It doesn't matter if you believe the story or not. What it does is it reinforces the globe. That's all they care about. Yeah. Do they do not care about anything else? They do not care if you show any interest or spend any money on on buying space literature or space related products mm -hmm. all they care about is making sure that that whole concept of space is in your head well it's all dependent on funding too so yeah they're getting a lot of money to do the research every year uh, 19 19 billion really? last year yeah yeah a lot of money you're paying for i mean granted they're building rockets and you know a lot of white uniforms and <laughs> people smiling for the camera but <laughs> that's all they're doing I don't. I mean, but th yeah, they're not spending nearly nineteen billion. No, no, not not even close. So, what are your thoughts on the um, the planets themselves beyond the moon? Do you think those they're are lights? Part, are they're, they lights? They're, they're just brighter lights. Okay. No, again, no different than a planetarium. What is Mars inside a planetarium? Yeah. It's just a brighter projection. You got stars that are tiny and planets that are less tiny. Right. That's all they are. You know, they're they're nothing you can land on. There, uh, in fact, you can't. 
yeah, you, if yeah, you have a telescope on the ground, they, you might be able to magnify them a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're never going there. The only people that can go there are, you know, is the United States military and other countries that have followed suit. Mm -hmm. I was asked to, um, I do some DJ work on the, the side for events and whatnot. They're looking into laser light shows. So yeah. they're asking me to find um, something new in laser lights. So I came across this thing. I think it's out of Japan, if I remember correctly. But essentially, they can create anything. Stars. In the, yeah, stars, yeah. suns, yeah. anything in the sky now. Yep. Yeah, it's amazing. Trend. And the, it shows you, I think that's where we're coming full circle. I think our civilization has now reached a point to where we are understanding there's uh, civilizations like come and go i mean look yeah. ours only go back mm -hmm. five thousand years i think that once you reach a point to where you start eventually you're going to figure out what this place is yeah and once that happens oh, then i think whoever built it shows up and then you got to make way for another group but yeah you know we we've come to the point look we can create stars now and simulate planets how much of a stretch is it mm -hmm. to just say look if it's just on a much much bigger scale why you know honestly i'm really surprised that nobody's even bothered to build like a super powered laser because what what are the rights to it and sh like like uh, uh nabisco and shoot some sort of projection on the moon for advertising why has that yeah. not happened yet and i think it's because it, it cuts too close to, or it's too close to home it, you know for same reason why no movie and uh, i don't know how far you want to go with this but the clue one which i still and people say oh it's not your best clue i'm going no but it's an interesting clue and that's how i kind of suck people into it right i go look no movie has ever greatest civil achievement in the history of civilization the united states space program right yep. men on the moon more than once to the point where we got bored and supposedly never <laughs> went back again <laughs> never no movie has ever been made about it that's Ever. a trip. That's yeah. Honestly, that's what hooked me into your series too. Was just that it, fact. It's it, and I, look, I'm a media junkie. If you're an American, you watch a lot of movies, a lot yeah. of television. And I'm not kidding when I say this. And and they're going, no, no. There's been movies. I'm going, no, no, there haven't. And, and that's not the spooky part. The spooky part. I didn't even talk about this in the clues, which was there's not even a straight to DVD version of any of this crap. Mm -hmm. You know, the, you'd think after um, the right stuff in 1983 and then Apollo 13 in 1995, you'd think somebody would, would do something and they can't. Yeah. They can't because during the process of making that movie, they would figure out that the whole, anyone in the studio would be like, wow, you know, it's pretty easy to fake this stuff. Yeah, they couldn't <laughs> even not... get near it. Like they see a script, like, no, can't it. No, yeah, you, you, all you need, it's easy to do. All you need, you know, your silent production guys that, that come through, you know, because when it comes to Hollywood, it's so easy to get producers in there. Mm -hmm. Producer is just a guy that donates money to the movie. Yeah. That's it. Anyone can be a producer. You want to walk into uh, to, to, to Fox and be a producer on a movie? Just say, hey, yeah, I've got $200,000 to donate to a movie. Fine, here yeah. you go. And and then if you have enough money, you can kill projects. Yep easily you can run into the ground and that's what they did they didn't allow any moon movies never never it's like in the, in the um the right stuff that's the one that killed me because i was again old enough to see that in the theater that movie you say well in fact stanton friedman not to drop a name but stanton friedman <laughs> told me it's like well there's no there's no market for moon movies there's no, no and no one would want to watch them <laughs> and it's like what do you are you insane i go the right stuff <laughs> not only did it make a whole bunch of money it was nominated for best picture would have mm -hmm. won it would have won mm -hmm. it outright except for a little known picture called gandhi <laughs> no one's gonna win against that thing with ben kingsley mm -hmm. you know that put ben on the map so and, and this thing was set up for a sequel the whole three-hour movie the uh the right stuff was basically just an astronaut recruiting movie and the the movie ends with them launching into low earth orbit yeah and the movie i'm going wow set up for a sequel sequel yep. never happened never happened and never will happen and uh apollo 13 you know the, the special effects were cheesy if you ever watched that and, yeah uh, yeah anyway and, and people still come back and say well you they'll use the like the seriously they'll reach it's like well there's a movie with with called moon I'm going, <laughs> really that one it's about clones living on the moon and how they discover <laughs> that they're clones well apollo 18 i'm going dude there was only <laughs> Apollo 17 and Apollo 18 were about little crab monsters disguised <laughs> as rocks that eat astronauts. I, there's nothing, there's nothing. I, I absorb all media. I know what's out there and it's not out there. <laughs> awesome. 
Oh man. Well, I want to thank you very much for coming on Mark. And, um, of course we got the other show that we're going to do. So the listeners and viewers will have another opportunity to hear you talk with also my co-host on, uh, the Mokita report. So again, I want to thank you. If you've got any, um, departing words you'd like to say, or possibly contact you want to give out to the listeners and viewers, go ahead. Sure. Don't believe a word I say. Just do here because because honestly, I'm going to sound absolutely insane and crazy. Don't seriously do not take my word as gospel. Do your own research. Ask questions and the easiest way. Just go into YouTube, type in flat earth and look at just the massive community that has formed over the last year and a half, two years. If you want to see my stuff, type in flat earth clues. I won't give you the the, the YouTube uh, name or right? you probably won't remember that anyway. Just type in either <laughs> flat earth or flat earth clues super simple and have fun because if you dig into it uh you're gonna lose a lot of sleep and my last parting shot is this if you like the life the way it is right now you think you got a good beat on things and you get up in the morning it's like yep things are pretty good then do not look into flat earth yeah, don't, do it. <laughs> don't do it stay away because if you go down this road once you once you let that genie out of the bottle, you cannot put it back in, oh, yeah. and then you're yeah, going to yeah. be writing mails to me going, "Oh, dude, you totally wrecked my life." So yeah. the farther down the hole you go, the more shit you run into. Yeah, yeah, you're never going to coming out. So mm-hmm. it's your choice. I'm just giving you fair warning. Yeah, and I'll also put a if you'd like, I'll put a link to your YouTube channel in our description on our YouTube channel, which is youtubecom slash user slash Third Eye Radio network so once again mark thank you for coming on and um hold on the line for just a second and everybody thank you for joining me on this first episode of the altar view and stay tuned next time um this is probably going to just be a youtube video anyway so um stay tuned thank you everybody have a great weekend this has been third eye radio network Thank you.